Hello, hello everyone, and welcome to Black Crusade, a Warhammer 40k tabletop role-playing game. If this is your first time joining, uh, welcome. I'm ELH, your Game Master for the evening. If you've never played or seen Black Crusade before, uh, it's actually pretty simple. Um, there's various factions in the Warhammer 40k universe, and Black Crusade especially is a chaos game, or essentially the quote-unquote big bad of the Warhammer 40k setting. Uh, today, I'm joined by four lovely individuals who will introdu introduce themselves in a moment. But before I let them do that, I do have to say one quick thing about Black Crusade and 40k in general. 40k is, for lack of a better way to put it, a very grim, dark setting, meaning that there are going to be mature themes in play. There are going to be um, some questionable choices, questionable decisions. But for the most part, it is important for me to say that as a chaos campaign, this is a quote-unquote evil campaign. Now, we're not going to go like full mustache twirling, you know, anti-party kind of evil, but um, it is one of those things where I do want to warn anybody who is expecting a happy-go-lucky campaign or something super, like, jovial. I mean, I, I expect the guys here to still do a little bit of humor, but it's not going to be like a, a black uh, dark heresy game where it's like, oh, well... I just got thrown here by my Inquisitor, and I don't know why I'm here. Oh, you too? Great. We have no fucking idea what we're doing. Um, so yeah, there's your warning. There's your mature content warning. But uh, let's just go around and have everyone introduce themselves, and then we'll get started proper. So, Mr. Dare Wolf, if you could introduce yourself and your character. Hey, everybody. My name's Dare Wolf. Uh, I'm playing Cantilo Sacto, Chaos Thousand Sun Sorcerer, aligned to Zeech. All right. Fable, you're up next. Uh, hello, I'm Fable. I'm playing Ira. He is a big old nasty plague marine aligned to Nurgle. All right, Strom, what do you got going on? Hello, my name is Strom. I'll be playing Sirak, the uh, word bearer's dark apostle. And certainly last but not least, Cat. Uh, Catatonia, playing Catatonia, uh, the uh, pirate prince. Very nice. And as I said earlier, I'm ELH, your Game Master. And with that, let's go ahead and get started. So as all 40k media starts, we have to start the same way. In the grim darkness of the 41st millennium, there is only war. The four of you have led interesting lives. And interesting is much an understatement. Some of you are coming in as Chaos Space Marines of varying orders. Some of you are elevated heretics, whatever your lot in life ends up being, the commonality point is that all of you have arrived on the Space Hulk known only as its designation SH-03, as in Space Hulk-03. Now, Space Hulk-03 is located somewhat near the Screaming Vortex, and what that means is that it's a common place for up-and-coming heretics to check out, raid, etc etc but like, like with all space hulks that's not without danger um because of its proximity to the vortex it is beset by all manner of warp entities all manner of factions basically it is somehow even more dangerous than your average space hulk if you get where i'm going with this and as you sort of come to the space hulk in your varying ways again what is common is that as you traverse through the multitude of corridors that look to be from different ships, different construction periods, different materials, you eventually all arrive almost at the same time in a T-shaped intersection where you're all just sort of seeing each other for the first time. And what I'm going to do is in roll 20, uh, I'm just going to use this as a reference for the Space Hulk. But the stream isn't going to see it. So stream, don't worry, I'll describe the major parts. But the map is just for the players to get sort of a visual representation of where they are in relation to one another. So as you all basically come to this T-shaped intersection together, um, we're going to give everybody a chance to visually describe their character. Uh, and then as after everyone's you know sort of given their little introductions, we'll go into actual role play. Um, so let's start off with Catatonia. Uh, tell us a little bit about uh, the character Catatonia, what they're wearing, uh, any visual things we should know about them, things of that nature. Oh man, brother, I wish I had uh, thought about this much more. thought about this 30 minutes ago, but that's as far as I got. 
but I just finished watching the fifth part of the Caribbean movie, which, by the way, not great, but fun. Fair. Um, it's called, okay, so Catatonia is a, oh, wait, no, I wrote something about that, right? Yeah, hold on, hold on, viewers or recording people. Don't go anywhere. Hold on. Bio, maybe... Well, whatever. Catatonia's in his uh, 50s somewhere. Oh, I wrote 40s. Uh, complexion dark. Hair is long. Um, I want to throw in some, uh, what's it called? One of those bandanas on top of my head to really hopefully sell that pirate theme. And I haven't decided just yet how much black to pink I'm wearing. So mm -hmm. I will be describing that uh, as I go further in the game. Um, I don't personally wear piercings on myself, uh, but I admire those who um, wear a lot of piercings all over their body. Um, and I think, uh, Mr. ELH, is that okay for now? That's perfectly fine, yeah. Thank you, excuse me. No, you're fine. So that is, uh, that is Catatonia. Uh, Ira, tell us a little bit about uh, what Ira is all about. All right, uh, era like most plague marines is just absolutely disgusting. Uh, though, uh, instead of most being these kind of like large bulbous figures, uh, he's kind of sick and thin, almost gaunt. Uh, his fold has long since bursted open, so his you know intestines are all, all sorts of out. Uh, his helm has this kind of a uh, strike, which looks almost like a lesion that's bursted open, uh, which has one kind of sickly yellow green eye peering out. Uh, on his right pauldron, you can see uh, this sort of, uh, to those of you who know weapons, it's, it's very clear it's, a, it's some sort of rocket launcher, but it's been overgrown by just the filth of Nurgle. Um, and he carries a combi bolter, and uh, underneath all the sickness and decay, uh, those of you who are familiar with chapters of Astartes, uh, or might have fought alongside or against them before, uh, you can see under all the the kind of filth and rust uh, is some Dark Angel's insignia on his left waldron. Very nice. And that is Zira. All right, up next, uh, tell us a little bit about uh, Cantillus. Uh, Cantillus is your atypical Thousand Sun Sorcerer. Blue armor, golden pommels, the eagles on the side, the blue head, you know, pommel at the back side, wearing a helmet. Um, in one hand, he is wielding a sword. Um, if you know anything about psychic or chaos sorcerers, it is obviously um, you know, a psychic sword. Um, and it's wreathed in like a green flame. His eyes themselves, you know, through the helmet are like almost ignited in green flame. And in his hand, his right hand, you see the crackle of kind of energy. Um, he's an imposing figure, but at the same time, as you look at him, the, the, the specific kind of like the best way to describe it is like the specificness of who he is. It's, it's almost like blurry. Like you're looking at something that's quite slightly blurred. And as you look at him, then maybe look back to Sirach, it's like you almost forget that he's there for a second. And then as you look back to him, you see him again quite clearly. But he stands tall, proud, and unmoving in this moment. Very cool. And then, yeah, last but not least, Sirach. Sirach is resplendent in his crimson armor. It seems unusually well taken care of. Uh, it's not quite gleaming, but it is not filthy, like most of the things um, that Chaos Aspirants have. Uh, for those who spend uh, an extra amount of time to look at it, notice that the armor is etched with hundreds or thousands of runes and sigils. Uh, he is carrying a legion flamer in one hand and uh, a uh, powered up Crozius in the other. And behind Sorak is what looks to be a, uh, uh, crazily enough, a, an Adeptus Sororitas uh, with her, uh, um, the double headed eagle of the empire defaced and scratched out uh, on the breastplate. Uh, and the dark power armor uh, sort of uh, almost pitted and scorched and scarred uh, while she is carrying a heavy bolter around. All right. 
And as said, it's one of those situations that no matter how perceptive you are, no matter how warp connected you are, when you all emerge into this T-shaped intersection at the same time, you're just seeing each other for the first time. So I'm curious, how do you all react to that? And how does the scene unfold? I'm going to turn it over to you guys at this point. Oh, light bulb, light bulb, I'd like to go first. Go for it. Um, I approach the intersection. I look left, I look right, and I look ahead. And again, everyone stops. I'm assuming everyone stops at their side of the corridor. I step forward to the middle. Um, let me look at the map to see who is in front of me. Um, oh, it doesn't look like it's exactly 100%. I think that's uh, Ira. Mm -hmm. All right. Ira, I specifically approach you. I don't, I don't get too close. I think I'm still you know, wary of what I'm approaching. And I take off a glove and I throw it on the floor. And I say, sir. You are upon my path. Uh, the the kind of uh, fleshy uh, launcher sitting on his shoulder kind of angles down with him as he as he looks down at you, <laughs> and you can see the the one eye that's visible kind of squints almost in, in a mixture of confusion and and sort of maybe a little awe that this this mortal has just stepped up to. What he can only assume he knows is, is an Astartes and demanded <laughs> that he moved out of his path. Uh, he'll kind of stare at you silently for a moment or two longer. And then, unfortunately, in a voice I can't do right now, I'll need to get a, a program or something. Uh, this sort of gurgling, guttural tone. Um, <clears throat> you ask me to move? Okay. Did you roll something? I think I heard a thing. Ah, uh, no, that was uh, that was Cantillus doing a little bit of flavor text in roll twenty. Love it. Um, do we do we have to like roll for that? Because I'm obviously trying to get him to get off my path, right? Versus I'm gonna his... say that uh, right now at the moment, just role play. I'll let you know when a roll is needed. All right. I say, sir, you are upon my path. I I intend to go in this direction, not in the direction of your peers. I wish to go ahead. Do you know what is behind me? I intend to find out, sir. And hopefully anything that was behind you is no longer there. Fortunately for you, what is behind me is how I arrived on the ship. The blessings of Venergo grow fruitfully in that part of this accursed vessel. I suspect you would not have a great time back there. As I'm standing in the middle of the road, I look left and I look to my right at our other companions, and I quickly do a namaste, you know, put my hands together, just bow really fast and say, excuse me, gentlemen, while I deal with this filth. And I take another step forward, another two steps, maybe. You hear a clang clang as Cantillos takes just a few steps forward, and that blackened energy that was wreathed around his arm, like, starts to almost and illuminate into like a literally almost like a torch on his hand it says mortal calm yourself you speak to an agent of nurgle a chaos space marine if you wish to survive this space hulk you will silence yourself or i will allow him to do with you as he sees fit and then i will nod my head sort of respectfully towards era uh, in this moment uh, also, the, the closer you get, uh, the more you get that stench of just sickness and rot. Oh, yeah. And oh, yeah. <laughs> some of his intestines may be a little bit too close at this point. Or, we're kind of we're kind of bu bulging out of the seams here. So <laughs> the closer you get, the closer that gets to you. Thank God for the respirator in this helmet. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> um, okay. A Durwolf's character, what's that called again? Uh, I'm a Thousand Sun Sorcerer. My name is Cantillus, but I haven't introduced myself yet, so you can call me whatever you want. Right, okay. Um, um, can I... Um, okay. I, I, I look at the Sorcerer, and I, and I take a step back. I, I retract those two steps, hopefully in a sign of respect. Um, and I say, um, Ooh, a Psyker, I have one of you back home. Tell me, what is my future today? <laughs> so... In this moment of pure just disrespect, the the sorcerer, I snap my finger, the flame dissipates. I am no mere source of a mortal. 
I am a sorcerer of the Thousand Suns, the most powerful psychers in the entire universe. You will show respect, or I will teach it to you. And then his eyes will glow even brighter green. And, you know, I, I make a motion with my hand that's wielding the sword. The sword comes down, and I just ever so slightly flick it forward um, to, to just kind of alert Sirach that we might have a, a moron on our hands. <laughs> <laughs> Sirak will put a, a gauntleted hand on Cantalus's shoulder and say, "Calm your humors, my brother. We do not have time for this." Uh, Iro is actually in a very similar motion. Uh, they're not touching you. Uh, he's he's aware of most. You know, don't want to touch the the sickness if you're not really with the the whole Nurgle <laughs> thing. Um, he'll kind of just hold his hand out and kind of give a and almost he's he's settled on an emotion now of amused. Uh, and kind of give a chuckle, uh, and then stare back down at Catatonia. <laughs> this one has spirits. I've not been spoken to in such a way in millennia. <laughs> you say spirit. I think it's foolhardiness. But those things tend to go together. Mortal, how did you get here? <clears throat> Do you not know me? I am Catatonia, the Wandering Prince. And you, Sorcerer, you look like you and your friend come expensive. I do not have the money to pay for your company. Give me a couple of days. It's a wonder we haven't heard of you, I guess. Working on it, sir. Always working on it. Until us will let out a deep, hearty laugh um, at that statement. I propose we treaty in this moment. We have just come from a place where a portal to the warp was opened, and a horde of daemons unleashed upon the vessel. While I am not afraid to fight them, their numbers were daunting. Perhaps we should, dare I say, travel together for a time and seek a way off this accursed wretch. Oh, I, I might apologize for that. Uh, I've recently fallen out of, we'll say, Nurgle's Gardens, and... <laughs> My entry into the Materium was not accurate, I guess. I might have disturbed a few denizens. Uh, speaking of, where are we exactly? Uh, I've not been in the Materium for a time. We are just outside the Screaming Vortex in a Space Hulk designated SH-03. And no, the warp rift we are talking about was not caused by you. And if this is true, then our need to regroup may be even more pressing. Mortal, I ask again, how did you arrive at this Space Hulk? Uh, a manner of some mystery to myself. Um, uh, it would not be to um, exaggerate it to say I have been intoxicated for some time. That is amazing. That's amazing. Cantillus is going to shake his head and be like, of course a mortal would seek to drown out his own miserable existence in alcohol. Pitiful. And Do not uh, forget our brothers and the Emperor's children, our cousins <laughs> there. The most distant of relatives, those space marines. Oh, shush, sir, sir. I will purchase your humors very soon. <laughs> At this point, Cantillus is just going to shake his head, his eyes no longer glow green, realizing that this is more just a, be a bemusing sort of conversation, and will turn back looking down the hallway just to make sure none of the daemons have followed them here. Yeah, and uh, let's do the first check of the game. Uh, Cantillus, I would like you to roll me a perception. Okay, do I have any modifiers? Uh, I'll give you a plus 20, because this is uh, fairly easy, all things considered. Cool beans. Uh, you know, well, he does that. I'm wow, not... Ooh. 98. Ooh, well, see, I don't see crap. Um, <laughs> hmm. <laughs> that, uh, that's interesting. What does Moira see? Because she would have been uh, not paying attention and looking behind so the entire I time. imagine that as I turn back to look down mm -hmm. the hallway, I'm actually distracted, still distracted by the uh, the the look of Ira, even though I've I've seen chaos you know, uh, <laughs> like the undead plague marines before. It's just somewhat jarring. So as I look down, I still look back to him, maybe take a step away. A fly just, gets in your eye. Yeah. This, 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 ah. 
Blasted yeah. Flame Marine. I think it's like, again one of those things where can tell us you're distracted, but uh, Moria uh, kind of puts her ear to one of the walls and listens intently. Um, my liege, I believe we should make haste. It sounds like some of the gibbering horrors that we escaped might have caught wind of our trail. Mm, seems we are out of time. I suggest both of you come with us if you do not want to be buried in a horde of teeth and claw. Teeth and claws I didn't pay for? No, thank you. Well, I didn't come back to the Materium just to fall as soon as I have got here. And we would not mind the extra... Mm. I look at Ira and... Uh, Sorok looks at Ira and says, would not mind the extra weaponry and looks over at uh, Catatonia and says, yeah, how no matter how small they are. <laughs> Catatonia, what is back the way in which you came? Ira, I understand you have mentioned that there is but a ship or warp opening down your hallway. It would appear that Catonia's direction is the direction we should travel, unless anyone says differently. No, no, boring path. That's why I kept going this way. Boring sounds more exciting than teeth and claws. And Cantillus is going to make his way down that hallway, unless anyone stops. Unless the warp has receded itself from my arrival, then I believe Catatonia's path might be the least threatening to us. Gotcha. So again, the map in Roll20 isn't a scale, it's just supposed to be a visual reference of stuff. But Catatonia, as everybody else in the party maybe moves past you and maybe you fall in line behind them or middle of the group, however you want to flavor it, um, you realize after maybe about probably five, ten meters that this isn't the passageway you came in on as if you've somehow walked into a different section of the Space Hulk. Um, which, you know, for a Space Hulk, that sort of thing is very common where, you know, you enter one area and you end up in another, but it's completely different from the one that you uh, remembered coming into, specifically because the walls are covered in this... Uh, thick ichor, uh, almost like a mixture of blood, coagulated blood, and oil. The smell is somewhere in the neighborhood of a copper mixed with um, decay, so I think Ira's having a good time, but everybody else who doesn't have a filter, uh, you're definitely smelling this. Mm. Um, but probably over. the most important thing is that eventually you come to a closed door. Now, this door is almost like a blast door, like an airlock, wherein there is a panel next to the door uh, that is flickering on and off. Uh, so you might be able to tech it open. But at the moment, you're dealing with a door that could potentially open up into the void of space if you're not careful about things. Uh, I do have a embedded Auspex. Could I, you know, pop that on and see if I can't detect what's on the other side of this door? You certainly may. Go ahead and uh, let's see what your perception's like. All right. Uh, It'd be worse than Cantillos's. You give me just a moment to go double check my modifiers. Uh, also, I get a... LH, I'm, I'm oh. really excited that we're on Space Hulk shoe. Yeah, I, uh, I did that <laughs> inadvertently. I didn't realize it until I said it. I was like, oh, yeah, I see what I did here. <clears throat> get a, ooh, a plus 20. Awesome. Uh, All right, that's three. three degrees of success. Very nice. And I can see I'm going to have to figure out something for the stream because uh, your rolls are actually not coming through. That yeah, is... I only see the results. Uh -oh. Degrees. Huh. Oh, well, yeah, that's uh, that's just how that prints the... Uh... Yeah. Is there this a way a... that we can toggle that so that it will show up for everybody, or am I the only one that's going to see that? Oh, is it wait, rolling wait. to GM only? No, I can see Era's awareness test. Yeah, I see it. Huh. I don't yeah, see my, that my... number. Is that what we're saying? Because I can see the degrees of success, but I don't see that number being rolled. Right. That, I mean, that's what you're supposed to be. Uh, for example, let me uh, let me screenshot what I'm seeing. And again, this is partially why we're we're offline today and why this is a uh, quote unquote pre recorded session. Yeah. Uh, yeah because tech issues. Yay, tech issues. Gotta have. But let me put this in Discord. So I am seeing just this right now. So I'm seeing that you guys are rolling. But I'm not oh. seeing the levels of success. Do 
do you are you open in a different so elh are you open in a different like player version of the map right now because you may have to go in and like you know what that might be exactly what it is let me go to the character sheets and switch it to where if you edit them that it's all players can see and edit the characters and that might fix it for you yep i fixed it we're good we're good i fixed it all right so uh with three degrees of success era uh, what you detect on the other side of the room is what could be or what used to have been um, a shrine of worship for the Adeptus Mechanicus. Now, you're not detecting any tech priests or members of the Red Cloth inside, but what you are detecting is an active power source, uh, presumably a data terminal of sorts, and what more than likely is just a bunch of uh, menial servitors. So nothing dangerous, at least to someone such as you, but uh, better than what's presumably behind you, if you get my meaning. Yeah. Um, all right. Uh, <clears throat> once uh, you hear like a a slight whirring from the uh, the helmet of the uh, plague marine, which is weird because you would presume he's entirely fleshy. Uh, before he he kind of speaks up and straightens. Uh, my scans have picked up servitors and some sort of power source uh, nothing dangerous really inside uh, are any of you technically trained uh, I'll admit I don't recognize this terminal in the slightest my experience has taught me that the best way to open up a locked mechanicus door is to just smash the keypad Hold, my friend. I may or may not have some familiarity with these very basic uh, systems, unless anyone wants to um, open it first, or smash it open first. Proceed, mortal. Quit your yammering. I approach the buttons and dials, whatever is in front of me. I remove my right glove. I forgot to pick up my left glove. (laughs) Yeah, that glove is lost to time now. Yep. (laughs) I'm pretty sure I also stepped um, on it, so it's got all... You didn't want it anyways. Um, and uh, I start to push buttons. Now, you will all help me because I don't know what to do now to make it roll. Sure. Uh, so what, what you're going to do is uh, on your character sheet, uh, okay. there should be a skill uh, labeled tech use. Yep. And you literally just want to click tech use, and we'll see what happens. Okay, no modifiers, right? Uh, no modifiers, but the sheet will handle any of your checkboxes, which you have one, so it'll handle it for you. Gotcha. Wow. Ooh, yay. That is, uh, actually a significant number of successes, so... Oh, man. Uh, perhaps as a surprise to everyone else, but not to Cantonia, or Catatonia, uh, you push what it seems to be, um, almost like a guttural instinct that you're like, yeah, if I push this button and this button... And sure enough, uh, after maybe only 10 seconds of fiddling, the door opens up. And you see inside the data shrine. And floating around are several servo skulls. There is uh, probably about two or three servitors with um, sort of that big like wrench arm that we see sometimes servitors having. Mm -hmm. Um, But for those who don't really know what a servitor is... Um, just imagine a mostly human, but also mostly augmentic sort of corpse that's walking around. And that Even that's being generous. They're basically reanimated corpses or lobotomized humans, in a sense. Um, so they're probably not going to hold the best of conversations, if you get where I'm going with this. And Tillis is going to let out a impressed huff at Catatonia's uh, quick work of the door. And he's going to state, you may provide useful yet, human. And uh, he's going to just uh, arrogantly stride into the room. Uh, Ira will kind of give you what you assume is a smile because his eyes kind of crinkle up. Uh, could also be a grimace of pain. Who knows what's going on under there? Uh, and he'll say, I knew this one had spirit. And then follow. Uh, be careful, mortal. Looks like you've caught the eye of... One of Nurgle's blessed. I, I simply bow, and um, I uh, look at Moira, and I make a quick scissor. Um, what's it called? Motion toward. Does she have hair? 
She does. Yep. Yeah, I make a scissor motion towards her hair and I say money. <clears throat> and I think Moria just sort of rolls her eyes as everybody uh, enters into the room. And yeah, when you come inside, uh, to your immediate left, or no, to your immediate right as you come into the room, um, you do, of course, see the green light of a data shrine. Uh, swirling around it are uh, those servo skulls I mentioned earlier. Uh, in addition, uh -oh. uh, what you're seeing is that there is a display on the data shrine itself. Uh, not unlike an old terminal you would find on Earth. Like, we're talking very ancient, very old, very finicky. Um, the servitors are just sort of milling about. Uh, however, uh, we'll as you all guys. enter this room... I am going to need a stealth check from all of you. Uh oh. <laughs> uh, I just I just want everyone oh, to know I'm rolling for I'm rolling for an 11 right now. Nice. We're not being stealthy. <laughs> uh, uh, well, oh, could I right, could so... I try and roll it with perception? Oof. Oof. Uh, can I reroll? Wait, no. I get a plus 2 for um, we quicken the dead, right? Right, but that's well, a forty-seven. That's... I don't think a forty-seven is gonna even with your modifier. I don't think that's gonna beat it. Well, Gosh, uh, no, the, not at all. Quicken the dead is to initiative, not to. to stop. Oh, okay. Excuse me. Yep. Uh, it's, it's GM would would somehow some way I be able to use maybe perception <laughs> instead of agility? Ah, uh, nah. I gotta give you. Right. Gotta be a straight stealth here, unfortunately. Ooh. <laughs> All right. So um, what happens is, Cantillus, you have the sense of mind to sort of not stomp into the room. <clears throat> Everybody else, though, is you're just sort of like quietly walking in. Everybody goes clunk, 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 clunk. <laughs> you see Cantillus as his as he looks back at you. And even though he's wearing a helmet, he looks really annoyed. <laughs> and if you that wasn't bad enough, as you start to maybe say something about their finesse, from a doorway uh, that is to your left as you enter the room. Um, it's slightly ajar. The door, if you imagine a set of double doors, um, one is completely in the wall itself. The other one is kind of like doing that typical uh, Space Hulk thing where the door is just kind of clicking and like fidgeting or vibrating a little bit. Mm -hmm. But from that side of the uh, hallway, you hear what could be the sound of screeches and skittering of many legs and arms uh, trailing along the walls. Ready yourselves. Battle approaches. Uh, I, I guess an important thing here, are we able to, are we meant to be able to see them right now? Because they're, Yes, they're, they're on, I would okay. say that if you were to look down the passageway, uh, what you see coming towards you are multi-limbed horrific sort of you almost think them to call them warp entities, but you're not really sure what to make of them. They're some kind of Xenos. Uh, their flesh is uh, mottled and pale. Uh, they have what appear to be surgically implanted devices, uh, weapons and tech alike uh, along their forms. And when I say multi-limbed, I don't just mean legs. Like They have insectoid-like legs, about six to eight, uh, but they also have multiple sets of arms. And some of those arms have quite literally almost like Metroid style where half the arm is a gun and maybe the other half on another arm is like a sword. But I think it's safe for me to say that even if you don't know what this is in character, out of character, I can tell you that these are the aliens known as Rat Ghoul. And if you've never fought a Rat Ghoul before, oh boy, are you in for some fun. Oh boy. Not yet fought one. Uh... <clears throat> Well, I have no idea what these are. Uh, I come from a very different time period where we didn't ask you those questions. We just shot them. Mm -hmm. um, so falling back on habit, uh, I'm going to to lower my my combi bolter mm -hmm. uh, and let off a few. All right. So we are going to enter into initiative order. So I believe... Remember to click your token. Whenever yep, you... that's what it said. If you select your token and then hit the initiative button, it should automatically add you to the turn order. I actually rolled good initiative? What the f uh, The initiative button is, where do I find that? Uh, below your stats. So right next to infamy. Got it. Uh, it's 1d10 agility, right? Yep. Uh, well, 1d10 plus 2 for you, because uh, you're quick in the dead. 
Okay, so, that so would that's be actually a 17, 17? for you. Yep. All right. Makes sense. All right, Rakul, what do you got going on? Let's see, you have mm -hmm. that. So you are rolling a seven. You are rolling also a seven. Okay, apparently they're all Lots rolling sevens. sevens for whatever reason. <laughs> Praise okay. me, Nurgle. Yeah, there you go. Apparently Nurgle is very, very much in your favor right now. All right, so everybody's in the turn order. Let's sort by descending and see who's up first. Uh, seems that Catatonia, you are quick on the draw here. What would you like to do? I would like to uh, jump behind Ira and pull out my uh, Howler rifle. Okay. Um, is that like one half action? Is that both my half actions? Um, I believe half your action, unless you have quick draw, is to get your weapon out. Right. Um, which means you still have one half action remaining. So you can either move behind me or you can attempt to fire from there. I would like to move behind my friend Ira. All right. He just doesn't know he's my friend yet. I would. I still need to purchase him. <laughs> Fair enough. All right. Well, that is going to be your turn then. Uh, Ira, what do you got going on? Yeah, uh, that Rekul Render right there in front. Uh, he is the target of my combi bolter uh, semi-auto burst. All right. So there's kind of that muffled thump, 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 thump as uh, your combi bolter fires out. Yeah. Uh, go ahead. And uh, I think this might actually be short range for you. Let's check ranges. It is. Yeah. So with a 32, uh, uh, yeah, so, you're definitely going to hit this thing. Well, uh, that's semi-auto, so it's uh, one hit for every two. Mm -hmm. uh, so I'm going to hit all... It's one, so four, five, six, seven. Uh, so I'm hitting four shots right now. Sounds right. Yep. Uh, no, five, because I have the initial one, too. Yeah, I was going to say, the initial one does count as well. So, wait, hold on, let me let me... So I have to, I don't know why I'm failing at doing basic mathematics right now. So I've, I've five drinks of success. Every, it's two past the first. So it's two extra hits. I'm sorry. Uh, which doubles up to four. So six hits total. Uh, it's full auto. That's every degree. That's what it is. Yeah. I, I was doing full auto. There. Okay. So yeah, it's, it's six hits total uh, from my Legion combi bolter. Uh, so uno. Oh, that's, that's uh, actually really good. That's, that's a righteous fury or a zealous hatred, I should say. Yeah. Are these. Uh, notable enough NPCs that they're going to insta-kill? Or are they surviving that? Let's just say that if you roll one more damage, like another bolter shell hitting them, they're going to die. But yeah, even with the critical damage, they would have initially survived the first round. Um, so let's see, you rolled a 32. So I think uh, 23, If correct me if I'm wrong, but that is an arm, yes? Uh, 23 is the... Uh, left arm if mm -hmm. they follow normal person. They do. So what happens is as you fire your commie bolter, the first shell slams into the left arm, which is carrying what appears to be this dark, uh, almost scythe-like uh, implement. Uh, the bolter cell slams into the arm with such force uh, that it literally detonates and the arm falls off and basically splinters into pieces as it hits the deck plate. And the creature lets out an ungodly wail that is almost like a, a pterodactyl uh, mixed with a T-Rex. It is, to mortals, uh, might be a very fearful thing, but you're all heretics, so you don't really do the fear thing. So I fear all right, can I make the noise? You may certainly make the noise. That was a pretty good noise. Yeah. Uh, all right, so that was my first hit. My second one is going into the same one. Okay. Uh, 20 pen four. And that is enough that uh, when you hit them again, uh, you hit uh, moving probably across their chest. Um, you are able to basically carve a sizable chunk out of their torso as the Rakul render goes down. All right. And then he has a friend within two meters. I can allocate my hits to him now, that mm -hmm. Rakul abomination. Uh, so I've got four more. Uh, that's 19 pen four on the Rakul abomination. Okay. So... Almost unnervingly, when you fire into the Abomination, moving your shots from the falling form of the Render, the Abomination is a little bit bigger. Uh, more obvious that they have dermal plating sort of surgically, if horrifically, implanted in its skin. And when you hit it with this first shot, it just sort of looks down at where the Bolter Shell impacted. And almost like the scene from The Matrix where Neo just sort of looks down and then back up, it's sort of that same thing where this is my way of telling you, you did no damage to it. <laughs> okay. 
Uh, well, I've still got three more. Uh, fuck that thing. It's going to get a rocket launcher, I feel like. Uh, I've got three more hits. It's going to go into it, though. All right, the next one's 18. Does nothing, mm-hmm. I imagine. Yep, still nothing. Ooh, that's a crit. That is a crit. So you will actually do a grand total of three damage to it. Uh, but it also a critical effect. So yeah, go ahead and roll that for me, and we'll see what the critical effect is. Uh, if I remember right, aren't critical effects based off damage done? Well, remember, because if it's Zealous Hatred, because I was just looking at this the other day, um, if it's Zealous Hatred, you get an automatic uh, critical injury um, that it doesn't matter so much what... Um, oh, you know what? I think I know what you're saying. You're saying like where it's hitting. Yeah. Uh, let, me, let me look that up, because I think you're hitting him in the body at this point. Yes, you are hitting him in the body. So it would be a body critical effect for you. Are both those explosive or are they? Okay. So yeah, I need you to roll me a D5 and I'll tell you what happens. Uh, Two. All right. So uh, what happens is the concussion of the explosion uh, as it slams into the body of this abomination. um, It is more or less forced to the ground um and i actually have to roll a toughness for it so let's see it has a toughness of oh it actually has a natural toughness of course survey says with a 28 it actually despite the fact that you can hear the cracking of its implanted ceramic plates and the concussion like literally flattening the organs inside it remains standing all right, and then this is the the last shot before the end of my turn. <laughs> another cr- apparently you really want to crit wow. this thing. All right, yeah, uh, go ahead and uh, give me another uh, D five. Uh, it's a one. A one. So this time, uh, the target is knocked back uh, four meters, so it slams into a door uh, behind it, and it actually falls prone. Uh, so the legs underneath of it give out as the second explosion slams into it. Um, so it is technically considered prone for those of you that are doing ranged combat. Nice. Uh, and then I will draw my uh, plague knife as my other half action and sort of just hold it like uh, along while while I'm gripping my my combi bolter, I've kind of just got my my plague knife in my hand as like a makeshift bayonet because I don't have the melee attachment for this. Got it. Uh, just in case I decide to charge. All right, Moria, what is uh, what is good old Moria doing? Um, Moira is going to take up a position behind uh, Catatonia. Okay. Almost uncomfortably close with the massive heavy bolter. Oh my god. Um, oh, please tell me she has target selection if you're going to do what I think you're going to do. And... I was going to put her in Overwatch, but apparently that's a full action. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know what? She'll you just... could aim. Yeah, that's what she's going to do. She's going to start aiming. All right. Cantillus, what would you like to do? I am going to get crazy here, and I am going to call upon the powers of chaos. All right, I'm here we go, make... everybody. Buckle in. It's time for Tumble Jars of Blood. TPK. Yeah, let's get TPK. wild. <laughs> um, I'm going to use a unfettered psi ability to attempt to manifest the psychic power... That is called uh, Force Bolt. So okay. you're going to have to help me out with this because I'm still trying to understand the rules here. So I'm going to make a willpower test. Yeah. So you're okay. the first thing you're going to do is yes. you're going to try and manifest the power. And uh, okay. you said Doom Bolt, correct? Uh, I am using, yes, a Doom Bolt, correct. Okay. So it's just going to be a flat, no modifier willpower test. And uh, if you they... six... Oh, go ahead. I thought they got a plus five per psi rating with that. Uh, I mean, unless they did it in an errata I don't have. Uh, the focus power just says challenging plus zero willpower. The range, however, is 20 meters times psi rating. And let's see here. Aligned. I'm just trying to see if I have anything else. 
Psi rating of three. Starting talent Psi rating times three. What is that? It, it basically means that you have a Psi rating of three. Okay. Yeah. And list below. No bonuses. I think I think I just roll a willpower test. I think yep. that's how this works. I think you just cool roll that flat. Right, let's oh no, they do. Uh, looking at the second part of the sheet, if I go to focus power with willpower yes. perception, uh -huh. uh, let's say plus five per PR. Hmm. So I get a plus fifteen. Is that how it works? Uh, a modifier. Uh, it, it automatically does it in the focus power test on the sheet. Oh, it does. Uh, yeah, uh, it asks you for. So I go to uh, Saikana and then I do willpower. Yeah, mm -hmm. and then it, it asks you for uh, oh, okay. a modifier. Plus five, five for PR, yeah. Okay, submit. I'm doing unfettered. Well, you have oh. to actually enter a number there, or else it'll, it'll roll a zero. Oh, what did uh, I have to roll? I'm sorry. I'm so confused. Good. Uh, you rolled a 61. Yes, you manifested it, so that means that uh, you are able to manifest this power, and hey, no perils. So that's Oh, good. sweet. Yeah, so this bolt of energy crackles in his hand. And he's going to blast it at that one that's on the ground because he doesn't like that one. All right. So I need you to roll me 1d10 plus 3 energy damage here. Let me show you the true strength of chaos. Xenos. I'm just blasting this bolt of energy down the hallway. Mm -hmm. um, 1d10 plus 3, you said? Yep. Don't be shitty. Wow. <laughs> you guys are critting up a storm today. That right, is impressive. Next session. We're going to only roll 100s. We're not going to crit a thing. Enjoy it while it lasts. Stop that. Um, so his eyes just ignite in that green dark energy that everyone saw earlier. And this bolt of just pure chaos energy just blasts down the hallway, scorching the side. Kind of like, like, like almost like ricocheting off the walls until it blasts the, uh, the abomination. All right. So... Uh, what I'm going to say is you, even with your pen eight on that attack, mm -hmm. um, it's not going to take any damage, but you is going to suffer an energy critical effect all the same. Um, so I need you to roll me a 1d5. I can do that. Oh, uh, it, technically, unless you want to fluff it, which I'm fine with, I'm just making sure we haven't forgot. Uh, it does technically take one damage no matter what. You're right. You're everything. right. Because criticals always deal at least one damage. I got you. So I actually need to adjust that a little bit. We should be good now. All right. A three. Well, uh, as your doom bolt slams into it, um, you see that the flesh of its chest uh, begin to cook and burn away as you see the interior, or at least partially the interior of this rat ghoul. And you see not only that there is a multitude of armor from all sorts of places. Like you're might even seeing like Imperial guard armor, like implanted beneath the flesh. Um, but what happens is it is going to suffer uh, some fatigue and some toughness damage, which I will handle on my side. Very nice. Uh, anything else you'd like to do? So that was a half action. So I have right. another half action left. And I'm actually going to use that to position myself back here. And is there like a um, is there like a, a a button or something I can push to close that door? There certainly is. Very easy for you to close that door if you. Yeah, I just it. take a I just take a, a quote unquote five foot step back, and I'm going to close the door behind us, and I'm going to shout at Ira, uh, Ira, use your rocket launcher. Its armor is too strong. <laughs> All right, Sirak, what do you got going on there, buddy? Um, so it's within twenty meters, right? It is. Yeah, it's gonna get a flamer to the face. Ooh, flamers are fun. So if uh, I remember I... flame rules correctly, I'm rolling an agility. Yes. Yeah. So I know there is a thing. Uh, they are always considered to hit targets in the body and will jam if the fire rolls a nine on any hits damage dice. So yes, it just hits and it's an agility test to not get set on fire all right well uh, i actually I... have a macro for this so let's see what we got uh no it rolled a 73 so you're hitting uh you're definitely hitting it uh hold on i have to close my character sheets and open them back up and then i think it's a secondary test to make sure that you don't catch fire this is just initial damage you can right lit on fire after the fact yeah, it's two agility checks, one to see if you get hit by the fire and one to see if you catch fire. Yeah. Uh, and 
that one. Ooh. All right. Uh, didn't you say something happens on a nine? Because you did yeah, roll yeah. a nine. It's also best craftsmanship, so it can't jam. It essentially jams on a nine, but it can't jam. Mm. So maybe it's one of those things that as you spew forth, uh, I don't want to say holy Prometheum, but blasphemous Prometheum. There we go. Mm -hmm. As you spew forth this blasphemous Prometheum and it catches the light and fills the corridor with flames, um, the abomination... Uh, sort of rides in agony on the floor as, uh, let's see if it catches on fire. Uh, no, actually, it doesn't catch fire. So, holy crap, it rolled a one. Wow. <laughs> um, it's one of those things where you, you know, basically light the cord on fire, then you stop and kind of survey uh, the charred, smoky aftermath. And to your horror, the Rakul is not only still moving, but now you can definitely see down to its muscles and bone itself. Like this is almost like doom eternal levels of grotesque where this thing should be dead. It should have died like four times already. It's still kicking. Hmm. Now it's turn. Uh, I still have a half action left. I couldn't just fire my flamer again, could I? Uh, I don't think you can. Yeah, Maybe I'm pretty you sure you can't no. use the same weapon. At least I'm like, I'm if like I can't 50 use the sure. same weapon, I can throw a grenade at it. <laughs> I think so. <clears throat> yeah, I don't have a problem with that. If you want to throw a grenade at it, go for it. Uh, okay. <clears throat> so that's just going to be a uh, ballistic skill test. And uh, uh, hopefully you don't fail, because otherwise it's going to scatter. No aim. Uh... We can only scatter 1d5 meters. I think we're safe. It's within my range so it's yep. in what's short range again uh Plus short range is half 10? of the uh less than half of the range of your weapon um okay strength bonus is nine times three yeah it's within half range mm -hmm. yep uh yep all right so as you <laughs> You know, wash the area with flame. You see it's still standing. You immediately just sort of almost instinctually reach down, grab one of your Legion frag grenades, and hurl it down the corridor. Uh, Where were you aiming? I was Fish. aiming at the abomination. Hold on. Can I use infamy to reroll if I spend an infamy point? Uh, I mean, depends on how much infamy you have, if I remember correctly. I have three. Yeah. Uh, well, I mean, I, I would, I will say that it, it can't scatter back to us, and if you roll low on the scattered die, it'll it'll still be in damage range of it. Yeah. Oh, okay. So I need you to roll me a uh, a d10 here to see which way it scatters. Not a problem. A two. Uh, so it's like this way. Yeah. So I think what happens is you actually throw it past the abomination, and it like clinks off the door behind it and falls behind the abomination. So. The Abomination's pretty much been lit on fire, shot, uh, everything at this point. Well, now it's suffering an explosion from behind it, and it actually oh, lifts it up off of the ground in <laughs> such a way that it doesn't land on its feet, but when it comes back down, eh, the Abomination doesn't look actually any worse for wear. In fact, now it just looks mad, like really <clears throat> mad. It really rolled touchies. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> It was Blast Force. Does it get the other guy? It does. So you hear a screech from something else uh, from the corridor that uh, supposedly the flames that you shot earlier didn't affect. But yeah, uh, that grenade will affect that one. It's going to suffer no damage because it's pen zero. All right. Good old frag grenades. Good old frag grenade. Yup. All right, well, it's now the Rat Ghoul's turn, and I think the Abomination is going to use its half action to stand up. So again, this horrific display of mangled flesh and uh, assorted metal just sort of stands up, uh, puts forth its Howler rifle, and opens fire completely. So this is going to be uh, at short range. So it succeeded, and I think it's aiming for Ira, but Ira. Uh, even with pen four, does a 12 even do anything to you? <laughs> no. Didn't think so. No, Nowhere that hits would do anything to me. All right. So kind of that same thing where, you know, it looked down at where you shot it and smiled. You kind of do the same thing, I like to imagine. Yeah. Uh, look, look down and then kind of give it a nice smile. That also reminds me, I have a reaction thing I need to be doing in these ranged engagements that I didn't oh. do last time. 
Uh, I have abominable physiology, so I can just use my reaction because I'm never going to make a dodge test. Like, let's just get that flat out. Mm -hmm. uh, but I can make a toughness test and reduce damage by degrees of success. Very nice. Is that a Nurgle ability? Because that's awesome. It makes sense. Mm -hmm. uh, hideous resilience, actually, is what it is. Sweet. All right. Well, uh, that's the abomination turn, which means that the individual that you heard uh, get caught in the frag grenade blast is now going to come charging down the corridor. <coughs> and oh, Ira, again, you're at the front, so I think what's going to happen is it's going to swing at you. What's up, big dog? And apparently it can't roll for crap because that is a 76. <laughs> So as it comes at you with these implanted monoblades coming from the left, from the right, and then up and then down, you just sort of stand there, not moving. And then you just sort of look down at yourself like that scene from uh, Pulp Fiction, and you're like, did, did you hit me at all? <laughs> uh, okay. But yeah, uh, we're now at a new round. Catatonia, what do you got going on, buddy? Uh, I see that, and again, uh, help me with pronunciation. I've been saying uh, Ira. Is it Ira? Uh, Ira. Ira. Excuse if me. If you want to get super fancy with it, you can go Ira, uh, but it's not. Ira. I like that. Um, I see that uh, Ira is uh, being assaulted, and again, I was taking cover behind him. Mm -hmm. I um, and what's your position? Are you 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 were standing right the whole time? Yeah, I've got this very squared stance with my commie bolter kind of flat out in front of me. Uh, you know, the if you've ever seen like a Stardew's art, the very generic sort of stance. Gotcha. All right. Um, I, uh, I would like to go down on one knee, uh, mm -hmm. kind of get into that space between your right and left uh, leg and open fire on the Rakugal with right, my Howler nice. rifle. And now how do I do that? So I believe there should be a attack button for each weapon that you have. Yep, over in gear. Is that is that damage? Uh, hit. No, hit. Okay, roll to hit. Okay, howler rifle. Here we go. Hit. And then uh, I'm going to... Hold on. It comes with uh, only single fire. Okay. Mm -hmm. I guess and I... this is point blank for you, too. Oh, okay. So... Um, Plus 30, if I remember correctly. Yep. Okay. So I'm not aiming. Uh, and again, uh, I can't fire twice with the same weapon. Is that what we said? Yeah. Okay. Uh, you could you could aim. Uh, yeah, you could half yeah, aim. At, at this yeah. point, I might as well, right? I've only got one shot. Yeah. yeah. So half let's aim, say you half aim, point. which means your total modifier on this is a forty. All right, let's do it. Okay, so uh, half aim, submit, point blank plus thirty, submit, standard attack, yes, submit. Which is another plus ten actually. So it's yeah, plus mm -hmm. fifty. I'm gonna get out. Wow. Oh, and almost... <laughs> uh, it's a good thing you had all those modifiers because you rolled a 77. <laughs> and yeah, uh, go ahead and roll me some damage as your howler rifle barks and discharges <laughs> some, shall we say, uh, esoteric uh, bits of shells into this thing. And with a pen of four, yes, you do just a little bit of damage to it. We'll take it. We'll take it. Actually, uh, I spoke too soon. You do no damage to it because it has a toughness total of 10. It's fine. Uh, there's a smile on my face just feeling the thrum of the weapon. <laughs> Very nice. He's enjoying being a part of the fun. There you go. All right, Ira, you, uh, you've you got a Rackwool Renderer bearing down on you. What are you going to do about it? Mm -hmm. uh, I have a question. Mr. I might have an answer. Uh, for hideous, or not hideous, resilience, uh, infectious miasma. Mm -hmm. uh, would you say that my allies would be exempt from that, or would they also be a threat? Remind me, is that a gift, or it is? It is a plague marine ability uh, where okay. I just sort of, uh, just sort of release a bunch of gases and and just nastiness. Uh, and uh, for the next twenty five plus one rounds at the start of the plague marine's turn. Uh, each other character within 10 meters of the Plague Marine suffers a single hit from 1d10 energy damage of the toxic quality, ignoring armor that is not environmentally sealed. Uh, I just want to know if you would just kind of swoop that for allies or if I need to be... Yeah, I'm reading it that. now. Um, let's see. I think it would only affect Catatonia since everyone else is in power armor, which is environmentally sealed. Right, yeah. What I'm going to say here is that it will affect uh, everyone in range. Because okay. it specifically says character, not enemy. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, if you don't mind hit Catatonia, uh, 
And, and Catatonia is not wearing a mask. I mean, you just do you, right? Nah. Uh, well, I'm, I, I'm aware enough of, of that that I don't, I don't think I would, I would hate you enough to, to want to kill you. Uh, not yet. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> uh, and I'm, I'm in melee, so I cannot fire my combi bolter. So, uh, yeah, I've got my plague knife uh, out, <clears throat> and I'm gonna smack him with it, I guess. All righty, smack away. You can half aim your plague knife. <laughs> yep, I, I can. Uh, wow. I miss horrifically. That is a 97. So yeah, I think what happens is you try to do the same sort of slashing maneuver to the rat ghoul, and then it looks down at itself and goes, <laughs> really? Well, this is embarrassing. Uh, and then and I'm going to go ahead and use my reaction for hideous resilience. Okay. Uh, so I'm going to make a minus 10 toughness test. Uh. And I, wow, I really failed that. Yeah. Yeah. That's okay. a failure, unfortunately. So I don't reduce any damage on the next hit. Never mind that. Right. Well, it's time for maybe the Sister of Battle to show everybody else. Uh, Moria, what do you got going on? Would it be possible for Sir Rock to go before Moira? Yes. If you, because you all have 10, if you want to act first, go for it. Is that all right, uh, Cantilius? All right. So then Sir Rock also being engaged. Uh, is going to slam down this rack ghoul with his uh, accursed Cruzius. Okay. Uh, by taking a half action to aim, of course. And this is where we start rolling a hundreds. I just feel it. <laughs> stop that talk, ELH. You stop it. Uh, yeah, that's two degrees of success. Yeah, that's two degrees of success. Uh, three, you get an initial one for success. Okay, three degrees of success. So let's see what my damage is. 17 pen 7. Well, that's very important because uh, as you slam your weapon into it, carving 18. away at 18. Okay. Because I have three degrees of success, so I can swap the damage roll if it's lower than my degrees of success. And it is. It is. Yep. You only roll Oh, I two. forgot you can do that. So uh, as you carve a chunk of flesh out of it, uh, it is going to take some noticeable damage to its body. Um, however, it is still kicking at the end of the day that it, it almost starts laughing in a, in a hideous wail that reminds you of like a banshee or some form of like super modulated banshee, almost like a, a tech priest giving, um, uh, attack code or other sorts of binary screeching. Uh, okay. All right. Um, can you do you want to go before Moira? Uh, if you don't mind, I think I'm going to. So Cantillus is going to step forward the uh, green burning energy in his, his visor. seems to transfer down his arm to his force sword. He's going to step in, and he's going to see if that weapon skill is, is worth its weight in weaponing. Um, so if I aim with a melee weapon, what is my bonus? How, how well, do I melee attack? I need help. So okay. normally a melee attack is going to be your weapon skill plus whatever modifier, like a standard attack is plus 10. Okay. Um, but you only have two half actions. So moving up to the rat ghoul yeah. is one half action and attacking okay. is another. I'll just do that then. So yeah, I believe your total modifier in this is just going to be a 10. All right. So I'm going to roll to hit. It's a half aim. So it's or, a plus 10, right? Well, well it's a no, standard you... attack. So that's where the plus 10 is coming from. Okay. You, you can't aim because you move. Uh, I do want to say uh, one second because I don't know if he was aware of this. Okay. Mm -hmm. You were three meters away. You could charge if you would like to. I will do that. Um, and charge is what? Another plus 10? Yeah, it'd be a plus 20 total. Okay. <clears throat> so, Smith. And. Oh, okay, hold on. I did this wrong. So let's roll the hit. I'm not aiming, so no aim. Mm -hmm. I am. Uh, my range is. Wait. Range hold doesn't on. apply to melee. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Okay, <laughs> melee hit. I went to the wrong weapon, so I'm not aiming. Mm -hmm. I am going standard attack, which is a plus um, 10. Charge. charge. Okay, charge. plus 20. Yep. Okay, no additional modifiers, right? Yep. Nope. 66, cool. that is enough Nailed to hit it. it. Nice. All right, so that will be a D10 plus 3, and I would also like to use the force ability, so I have to make a opposed willpower check. How do I do that? Uh, oh, basically, you're going to roll your willpower. I'm going to roll my willpower. And if you beat it, uh, if you get more degrees of success than it does, okay, uh, it'll do fine. 
And I didn't do um, it. I didn't do it. Oh, uh, yeah, I didn't it, do it, it either. Is, but it is a focus power test. What does that mean? Uh, so in Saikana, when you uh -huh. like how we did earlier with uh -huh. when you were rolling force bolt, uh, you do the same thing. Okay, so I do will. So I would roll it from that then. And yeah. then it, oh, okay, so I'm actually I'm gonna reroll it then. Five plus PR. I'm doing unfettered. Oh, hold on, wait. Whatever it, it says, five plus PR. I actually uh -huh. enter that, so it'd be fifteen in that in that modifier okay. field. Oh, I, I think I see the confusion here. So Wait, you're just sitting with four. your force sword, yeah? Yeah. Yes. So it, the force sword doesn't have a power attached to it. It does, however, have modifiers for psi rating. And I okay. think that's where you're getting confused. Well, I can I can use the ability to deal an extra 1d10 energy damage with it. Yeah, so I'm, I'm reading oh, it right now. Oh, that's what you're referring to. Okay. Yeah. I'm reading it right now. It says, whenever a Psyker damages an opponent, he may, as a free action, channel Psychic Force and Killing Wheel into the blade. This requires a focus power test using opposed willpower. Okay. So and we, for each we degree of success, half, right? it does 1d10 one one energy damage. Okay. So what I'm going to say is, let's see, you rolled a 61, so that is 66. Now here's the question: Does that count as actually activating a power or not? Because that uh, would be a you... sixty-six. I don't think so. It doesn't say it's a power. I can just channel energy into it, but I don't know. Right. Uh, you know, that's a good question. I have no idea. I've never. Um. No, it, it's not a power, so the strength doesn't matter. It would just be the what he rolled versus his willpower. What well, no, we number mean? Of degrees of success. He rolled doubles. Yeah, he rolled doubles. Yeah, I don't think that matters. Well, yeah. That, that, if it, I think that's the confusion here, and I think it's worth figuring this oh, out. Oh, no, no, no. Uh, well, the, the actual attack is just swinging a sword. That's right. what he rolled doubles on. The willpower test, he didn't. Well, if you I look think... at... Well, no, I mean, if you look at his new willpower, his channeled willpower, yeah. that's mm -hmm. a 66. Like, that he rolled 66. two 66s. Yeah. He rolled 61 plus plus 5. Right, yeah, for how... a total of 66. Yeah. But the dice roll wasn't... That, that plus plus five is where the if he put in the the modifiers correctly that's where that would be it'd be plus 15 that 61 is the actual roll okay Mod modifiers adding in don't make it a double it has to be a raw a raw, raw bevel okay again it's been a while since i've been in the system so we learning yeah, it okay. as we go but okay. uh yeah go ahead and roll me some damage on that contillus go ahead so am i getting the extra d10 or not getting the extra you D10? are oh well let's get wild then uh well how many degrees of success did he pass by uh, it looks one. like two? I'm seeing two. The, one or two. Two? One two. plus one extra. Yeah, yeah you so get two. one for succeeding and one. Yeah, so you're rolling one extra plus three and then two d10 that ignore armor and toughness. It's amazing. Uh, also, so two, also, eight. also, also, yeah. uh, a force weapons damage and penetration increase by plus one for each side rating the wielder has. Mm -hmm. So, what's the base on the weapon? Does anybody know? Uh, uh, I can even check. Right should now. start as 1d10 plus 3 plus your strength bonus. So then it would be 1d10 plus 6 plus, plus strength with a pen of... 6. Is that pen 6 base? No, uh, 3 base, so... So then pen 6, mm -hmm. so yeah. And then plus 2d10 extra for this attack. Wow, so I'm doing a 2d10 plus 8 then? Well, the, the 2d10 extra... Um, ignore armor and toughness. So that's pure damage. So mm -hmm. you should roll that separately. So I'm doing... Okay, then I'm confused at what I'm rolling. I'm sorry, guys. So I'm rolling 1d10 plus 8 plus we 2d10. We can fix this real easy. Go into your character sheet. Go to your yeah. force sword. Okay, I'm, I'm at my force sword. Change the damage to uh -huh. uh, 1d10 plus 5. Okay, done. Change the pen to 5. Okay, done. Now roll damage. Done. Okay, now roll 2d10. That's okay. a bolt pistol. That's not a force sword. Damn it. I am so bad at this. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's still wow. technically right. There okay. Is that it? Yes. So 27, pen 5 okay. is your base damage. Now okay. just do slash roll space 2d10. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can do that. Yeah. Right. And so this damage ignores tough armor and toughness. Yep. That's 2d20. Oops. Sorry. That's 2d10. 14. 14. So All right. 30, 41 damage. 41. So, Cantilla says, you come in with your force sword as it crackles with energy. You ram the blade home uh, into this creature's chest, and then you channel your uh, psychic potential into the blade, 
And as you sort of wrench it free off to the left, uh, what happens is you don't bifurcate the rat ghoul, but you quite literally tear enough of it apart that as it falls to the ground, like half of it falls off almost like a hinge uh, to the point that the rat ghoul is very much dead at this point. Witness true power as the energy crackles in the sword. And I'm done. Sorry that took like 10 minutes. <laughs> no, you're fine. This is why we're doing combat session one, because there's a lot of kinks to figure out. And it's better to figure it out now in a tutorial fight than it is like when it really, really matters. Right on. Yep. <clears throat> Especially with psychers. You, 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 pick, <laughs> you pick the most complicated thing to get back into it, which, you know, introduces you to everything. That's just mm -hmm. how I like to roll. <laughs> there you go. So Next. Moira is going to finish her her, uh, her full aim action with a half action mm -hmm. and fire at the Rakul. All right, uh, the, the abomination at the end of the corridor. Yeah. So hit. Also, just like the tabletop, melee is the way to go. <laughs> Let me it tell really you. is. It Holy really crap. Is. <laughs> uh, how far away is that? Uh, it, it's going to be short range for a heavy bolter. Uh, what's point blank range within two meters? Uh, it's within three or four, I think it is. Okay, yeah. As long as you're not in melee, uh, it's within three or four. And then full auto. By the way, ELH, beautiful map. Mm. Well done. Oh, thank you. Yeah, it looks really cool. <clears throat> yeah. Uh, so uh, 30, yeah. So that is... Three successes? Let's say one right? for the base success. Yeah, so I'm counting three total successes on that one. Okay. So and that's, that's three hits? Mm -hmm. Three How do you hits. determine total successes really quick? Because I'm confused sure. about that right so now. So, for example, uh, he rolled a 30, and his target was 57. Okay. So every 10 that he rolls beneath his target, so 50, 40, 30, mm -hmm. that is the... So you have 40 and 30, so that is 2 degrees, and that is how you get 2 degrees of success, plus 1 from succeeding initially. Nice. Understood. Perfect. Thank you. All right. So okay, let's see, so Moira, uh, first two bolters don't do anything, but the second one does do at least one damage, and I do need a critical effect, please. This combat's actually really on the fun, explosive by the way. chart. Yeah. This is yep. really cool. So let's see, explosive of two, which means... It's just blown back another five meters. <laughs> he's, just, he's, like, he's getting thrown up towards the roof, slammed into this door a bunch of times. We're just bullying this thing. You really are. And it's one of those things that, again, as uh, he falls prone, uh, he doesn't look all that worse for wear. He just sort of is getting thrown around like a ragdoll, though. <clears throat> and yeah, once uh, once you once you get past the initial crunch... Uh, for any any of the 40k combat systems or 40k systems have really fun combat yeah it feels very dynamic right now like it feels like especially like even though we're not doing much damage to it like we're just pinning it against this door and i imagine like the door is starting to buckle we're just like <laughs> yeah and that's that's actually what i would say is because on its turn um it's going to use half action to stand up and then uh it is going to uh actually start moving its back towards the door and interestingly enough is as it approaches the door, the door automatically opens for it, revealing what appears to be another uh, Mechanicus data shrine. And as it uh, moves into the data shrine, the door slams shut behind it, meaning that you guys are no longer in combat. And he got away. And with that, uh, let's take a... Uh, oh, God. I didn't even notice my avatar was uh, freaking out there. I wish someone had said something. Um, <laughs> yeah, let's take a uh, let's take a five to ten minute break. All right. Sounds good. I'm off to go get something to drink. All righty. I think I will do the same.
everybody has spaghetti. All right, welcome back, everyone. Uh, if you're just tuning in, the uh, lovely players have more or less just fended off a bit of uh, Rackle infestation. And we resume with all of them, uh, Ira, Cantillus, Can Catatonia, Sirach, uh, Moira. You're all sort of just looking down at what remains of a uh, Rackle renderer, and you're just sort of wondering, what the hell was that? Yeah, who would render in uh, Blender? So Cantillus is going to swiftly move his blade and point it at Catatonia, and very accusatorily, you, human, this is the direction you came from. That abomination wielded the same weapon as you. Explain yourself. Uh, and, and ELH, can I mm -hmm. can I BS this answer? Or you what? can BS as much as you want. I'll let you know if it gets too, uh, too weird. Gotcha. Um, I look over and I say, I put my hands up, my ungloved hands. And I say, sir... I assure you, I had not even touched the weapon that thing was wielding. Look, my gloves were just recently removed. I assure you, if I touch anything unsanitary, I try to remove my gloves. With a heavy sigh that sounds very almost Vader-like through his helmet, you hear him state, I have my eyes on you. You will stay forward of me in combat, lest you stab me in the back, mortal. And he's going to uh, maneuver himself back next to Moria. Now, our biggest pressing matter, now that that abomination has retreated and more than likely gone to get more of its foul kin, is to find a way off this hulk. Unfortunately, uh, our way onto this hulk is not available as a way off. And we know that Ira came through the Materium itself, thanks to Nurgle. You, mortal, how do you have any way we can get off this Hulk? Uh, talking to the GM, do, do I have access to my ship, or are we still looking for one? You're still looking for one. Okay. Um... Um... And again, you are the word bearer, correct? Yeah. Yeah. Um, oh, Scion of the Gods, I don't know where my ship is. It's a wonder we haven't heard of you. It is not a wonder, I am working on it. You seem to be good with technology. Look over that panel. Maybe you can finagle a scan or something for some working ships or shuttles. Well... I may as well ruin my now sullied hands. I daintily approach the console. Mm -hmm. And again, I, I look it over and I say, this, this equipment is quite ancient. I don't know if uh, I can be of any use. And it I pause as his words sacked, Sorak. I do not trust this mortal. I don't trust anyone who's in the grips of Slanesh's favor. <laughs> And I don't trust, and I don't trust the company of those who I have not bought. You are logical, Sirak. This is why I appreciate you. But this mortal does have a healthy bit of paranoia. Uh, uh, I proceed to push some buttons, I guess. All right, go ahead and roll me a tech <laughs> use. Let's see how you do. Uh, while they do their tech use and mm -hmm. sort of uh, do some like bickering amongst themselves. I'd like to kind of start strolling down the hallway, uh, down towards this next corpse. Just okay. checking down these these little alleyways here, make sure. There's yeah, not so there. so that everybody uh, even on stream can uh, can hear. So as you proceed down the corridor where the rackle came from, uh, maybe about three or four meters down the corridor, there is a branching path to the right. Uh, you see a closed door about ten meters down that way. If you mm -hmm. continue on the original passageway, you get about another five, 10 meters down, and you come to a plus safe intersection. Uh, uh, directly ahead of you is the door the rack will escape through. To your right is another corridor that goes for about uh, 10 or 15 meters before a locked door. And then to your left, uh, what you're seeing is what might be cryopods of some type, like the they're basically humanoid shaped. Uh, they have a frosted sort of glass on the front of them. Uh, there are four here. Uh, one of these tanks, uh, the door is open, 
and just a constant stream of heavy mist rolls out of it. Yeah, I'll, I'll let them complete their scene and then I'll, I'll start making mistakes by fucking with that. Okay. <laughs> All right, I'm uh, going to click on tech use. Um, it's it's a plus 10 modifier, still nothing. You know, I don't care. Uh, nothing let's see. Uh, there should actually be no modifier on tech use right. for this. Sounds good. Pew. Well, hey. apparently you're going to get three successes again. Yeah, so Catatonia, you fire up the data shrine and... You know, it's maybe been a while since you last messed with Mechanicus technology, but you figure it out pretty easily. It's not that hard. Um, and yes, you actually pull up what could be a manifest of potential vehicles. Now, I should clarify when I say this is that, again, this data shrine, this data terminal is old and you are in a space hulk. So what the data shrine thinks might be nearby might not be nearby. So just temper your expectations. But what you are seeing is a list of three vehicles. One is the equivalent of a Thunderhawk or a basically a Space Marine dropship. The other one you're seeing is what could be half of a Mars class conveyor or basically a freighter. Then you see something that doesn't make any sense. Uh, you see something called an Oblivion engine. And it's listed as a ship, but you have no idea what an Oblivion engine is. Uh, uh, gentlemen, uh, approach the console. Uh, it looks like we have some luck, and we found three ships. Or two ships and a third thing. Elaborate. Uh, it looks like we have a... Um, what, what is this thing? Aeronautica? An Aeronautica vessel? Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, some kind of void ship. Uh, looks like for uh, business or something. Freighter. And then something called an Oblivion. Would we know anything about this Oblivion, or is there a check we can make to maybe know something about it? Like, uh, well, let's check talk my... Forbidden Lore. Uh, what do people have for Forbidden Lore? Uh, I have the warp. That's Adeptus it. Astartes. Hold on, I've got I've got some. <clears throat> uh, oh, I should have taken pirates. That would have been good. Uh, I've got. Oh, I do have know. forbidden lore warp. Okay. I have forbidden lore psychers, forbidden lore lorp, or demon. Oh no, wait, no, no! I took forbidden lore. I had to pick one. Never mind. What did I pick? <clears throat> uh, I didn't pick one, so I'm gonna go with warp <laughs> because that seems to make sense. I've got book of Lorgar. War, Porous Heresy, Demonology. Hmm. Well, I, I found something that it got rid of on my sheet now, uh, right as I was going to use it. Uh, it got rid of some of my lores. Oh, yeah, I had same. <clears throat> I didn't notice that. Uh, well, let's see. Uh, I have uh, Depths of Stardis, Horus Heresy, The Long War, and then I also have uh, Heresy. All right. So... Common Lore, Imperial, Navy. Or not Navy Guard, sorry. <laughs> right, but what I'm hearing is that nobody has Forbidden Lore Archaeotech is what I'm hearing. No, sir. Okay. So unfortunately, uh, without any sort of knowledge to pull upon, you're all just sort of wondering, yeah, what the hell is an Oblivion Engine? Well, we need something void capable and jump capable. The Thunderhawk, unfortunately, will not get us sufficiently away. The Mars Freighter as this manifest dutifully points out, is only half of a ship, which is not what we were looking for. So we must hedge our bets and hope that this Oblivion engine is some sort of void capable ship. It gives us direction. We should travel in that direction. Catatonia, human, where is it located? Uh, I push more buttons. Uh, ELH, uh, reveal to me the location. Sure. So if you were to go the same direction that the Rackle went, so due east on this map, uh, you would pass through uh, one door into another data shrine. Then through that data shrine, you would then take your first right and go straight on till morning. Straight on to Oblivion. So that just too. to draw the projected path, it would be oh, like cut off at my the edge of my vision. 
but I've I've drawn the projected pass. So as we move along it, we shall we shall see it. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, also, also quickly, um, I think on my character sheet, uh, I, I'm seeing that I could take a trade. Does the character sheet have trade? Uh, uh, yes, should. Yeah. Uh, uh, oh no, it doesn't. It would have to be. Uh, you'd have to add another skill. Uh, for oh, it. okay, cool. Got it. Thank you. That was the only war skill that. Or also, quickly. Uh, who took uh, either Vox Links or Vox Beads? Uh, I have good helmet augmentations, so I have both. Um, not me, no. I, I, I should have, but all I took was ritual, uh, the ritual kit, and then the thing removed my gear, so I don't remember what else I got. <clears throat> but I Sorok do remember the ritual kit. Sorok and Moira both have Vox, uh, the Vox thing for their power armor. Oh, yeah, Derwolf, did you roll to see what uh, your cool stuff your power armor has? No, I didn't know I had to do that. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, all right. Well, his armor shall morph, you know, very zine slime yeah. in the middle. Uh, roll mm. 1d10. Uh, I can do that. Seven. A seven. Uh, I think that was actually one of the better ones. Good. Is that the reactor, I mean, I, if I remember the chart correctly, or is reactor uh, something else? Reactor's like two. It's uh, not chain bandoliers. I know that. Uh, it's not spikes either, so I think uh, you got the chain loin guard. Which is okay. Um, so you have basically the chain loin guard that any critical effect to the legs is reduced by two. That's amazing. Uh, you <clears throat> you also get to choose three subsystems. Mm -hmm. um, I suggest you take the sustainable power source so you don't have to keep recharging your armor every day. Done. Uh, and then probably Voxlink so you can keep in contact with you know, people with Voxes. Done. And then... Uh, go to page 175 mm -hmm. uh, in the PDF okay. to look up other ones. Yep. The rest of them are pretty okay. Okay. I will do that, and please continue on while I futz around with this. Yep. Um, so with that done, can I head up to these pods and kind of wipe off the, the muck and see what these might be? Sure. So, Ira, as you step up to the cryopods that you found and sort of wave your gauntleted hand uh, over the ice, I like to imagine that maybe you, you leave a little bit of a slime trail, because, again, Nurgle. Yeah. Um, but what you see inside, at least in the one that you've checked so far, you're seeing an emaciated corpse that looks like it died of nutrition uh, okay. loss. That it basically, they, the person inside came alive and then died of basically it's body eating itself um it's almost like a mummy in a way that it looks so decayed but also preserved um that <laughs> apparently this person suffered for a long period of time is what i'm getting at mm -hmm. uh what about the, the others so as you go to the second one i need you to roll me an agility please or oh. your dodge i should say oh a dodge okay well no that's that's the exact same thing uh hey maybe maybe i'll succeed it nope took a while and uh made me feel real bad so as you go to touch the surface of the second cryopod what happens is you hear a click and the door falls open off of its hinges and you knock dodging out of the way the door literally just hits you in the face for your helmet and then rolls to the side and inside is a large, almost, I hesitate to say this, almost alien-like egg. Like, legit, like, Geiger alien egg. Hmm. Okay. Uh, I'll inspect that in a moment. How many more are there after this mm, egg? Just one that is currently <laughs> uh, operational. Okay, I'm going to kind of keep an eye on the egg and then step over and check this, this next one. All right. Uh, this one does not have anything in it. Hmm. Okay. Um, keeping an eye on the egg, I'm going to shift back to the first one. Does that mummy person have anything on them? They do. Uh, they appear to have a very fine set of clothing on them that would remind you of the ostentatiousness of, say, a rogue trader or a well-to-do admiral. Hmm. Okay. Uh, I will call the group over. Uh, say that I have found something down this way, uh, and while I wait for them, I'll uh, I'll, I'll uh, I don't know what test this would be like a Medicaid test, or... probably Medicaid, yeah. 
to, to try and figure out what this egg is. Yeah. And I think you being Nurgle, you're really good at Medicaid. Uh, I've not <laughs> bought the advance yet, but I have uh, I have a decent int. I'm still rolling for 20, but, you know, soon I will, you know, be able to buy it. Uh, wow, I crashed. Wow, that is 100. Wow. Yeah. And I can't re-roll because Nurgle. So uh, that's what we're going with. Yeah, that's that's an egg. That's an egg. You, you can it's confirm that it is roundish, ovalish. <laughs> <laughs> Has some sort of outer protective shell-like thing. Maybe mm -hmm. something in it. What would I need to roll to figure this thing out? All right. So Cantillus, uh, Sarah, Catatonia, as you guys go to rejoin Era, um, I'll move your tokens just so you again have a visual representation of where you are thank you thank you um but as you uh kind of see this egg um what i'm gonna say is that when catatonia steps into view of the egg all of you hear like the sound of an eggshell uh opening like kind of a crunching sound ah. coming from the egg uh i'm gonna you know kind of take note of that and look over at catatonia because originally I I didn't pay much credence to uh to Catilius's, uh suspicions, but now that this egg reacts the second he's <laughs> near, um, I, I kind of I kind of give over and squint at him with you know my one visible eye, and then look um, back at the egg. <laughs> I see I see uh, my party members or some of them looking at me, and I, I and I just put my ungloved hands again. My hands are literally unclean of this. Can I use uh, demonology to see if it's um, something born of the warp? You certainly may. Uh, well, okay. with four degrees of success, you can confirm that that's not a warp creature. That's just okay. a, that's just a regular old abomination right there. Uh, can, GM, can I please take a willpower test? Sure. Uh, what are you uh, What are you willpower testing for? Is the question. Uh, I haven't decided yet. That's why I want to roll. Oh, yeah, sure. I don't mind. Yeah. Here we go. To shove my uh, face. Is there the any modifiers? Uh, I'd say no, but is there? Nah, I'd just say straight modifier. So zero. So you pass, yeah. whatever that means for you. Oh, okay. Um, in my heart, I wish to approach this shiny new thing that might be opening. But looking around me, I decide to maybe not immediately rush and inspect and touch uh, this new egg. Whatever it is, <clears throat> it is not born of the warp. It is Xenos in nature. You may do with it what you wish. Destroy it. I don't care. We should keep moving. Um, at the at the mention of destruction, I do let out a maybe we should keep it. Do what uh, you will, mortal. Uh, I will point out uh, as as you're, he, he's going to step forward to investigate what the cracking was, but. He'll, he'll kind of point to the uh, the first uh, pod, which you know has a slime mark across from where he wiped the frost away. Uh, there may be items uh, of mortal size in that container if you wish to inspect it. Uh, and then I'm I'm gonna just take a moment to you know see where it opened or attempted mm -hmm. to open. It's very easy. It's just a latch on the side, and when you open it up. Uh, the person inside falls forward onto the ground, uh, their bones and muscle immediately turning to dust, leaving oh, I behind... Oh, go I ahead, the sorry. Egg. I, I, meant, I meant the egg. Oh, you meant the egg. Okay, yeah, sorry. You, you said it was like cracking. Yeah. I'd... Yeah, uh, the egg does appear to be opening uh, at the top, so kind of a, you're seeing a spider web forming across the top. Yes, I'm literally doing the alien trope <laughs> zooming. I'm, I'm, I'm in. I want it. <laughs> no, I. It, it's, it's whether or not I want to give it and shove my face up there. Because man, do I want to <laughs> do it? I, I say do it. Yeah, I'll, 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 I'll lean forward and peer into it. What, what? I will power test it. I'm all like, is this a good idea? What, what beast can I commit to Nurgle in this, in this little egg? So everybody else, you're sort of just, you know poking around, you know, looking past Ira, maybe looking at the nearby dead uh, Rakul Render, when you hear a sickening crunch and then a scree, and then Ira, you stand up, you turn around, and there's like a baby Rakul on Ira's face, like almost face hugger style. It's just <laughs> trying its damnedest to get into his helmet, but to no avail. 
And Tilos is going to reach out and just grab it and <laughs> retch it off of Ira's face and then look at it. And it, it flails and, wildly. It's multiple arms just sort of flailing this way and that. Um, interestingly, as you look at this creature, you can tell that it actually already has implanted metal in it somehow. But it's not born of the warp. So I'm going to let you think of that as you will. So Cantillus looks at it. Something greater is happening aboard this space hulk. Look at this creature. It has already has implantation. Correct me if I am wrong, Sirak, but you said it was not born of the warp. It is not. Then someone has intentionally modified its structure and installed these metal plates, and with his one gauntleted hand, he's going to, like, tap on it. I'm sure the creature, like, squ squirrels. Oh, it, it squirms even more. Let's add a squirm. And in a moment of just, like, he thinks to himself for a moment, mm -hmm. he's then going to just slowly close his, his gauntlet ah. hand around it and just squeeze the life out oh, of it. Oh, can I, can I, like, try to stop him? Can I take, like, a agility you, test or something? Well, you, you use your body or your words. Either you would prefer. Um, I, I, is this a race against his hand? Because I might be leaping across the, the five I feet. I mean, he did say slowly. So yeah, yeah, I'm, like, I'm say, slowly, slowly, like, crushing the life um, out of it. Again, in, in my heart, I hear the screeching of this new life form, and I, and I put my hands, my whole, my whole two hands, uh, in between, um, your, in between the, maybe your pinky and your thumb, you know, like, no, no, don't, <laughs> don't hurt it. Cantillo stops and looks down at you. What is it to you, mortal? Opportunity, new life, a friend. Please let give it to me. I will. I will see what uh, what what we can do with it. Cantillos will look down at the creature, and you see his gauntleted hand ever so slightly release, but still hold it tight. Um, I will. I will try to seduce the little creature. I reach into my pocket and get what I have is some kind of. Who knows? Space jerky. Space jerky. There you go. Yeah, good old, good old corpse um, and I'm like, here, little one. Here. All right, Catatonia. I need you to roll me a dodge, please. <laughs> here we go. Dodge. Right, How right, many fingers should be agility, does correct? Lose? Yep, should be based on agility. Oh, wait, no, yeah. Just and Telos is going to, like, hold the creature out to him, just almost <laughs> inquisically, like, what's going to happen? All right, dodge. Here we go. Ooh. All right, so I think what happens is you offer the the space jerky, or probably what's corpse starch ration of some point. Uh, you offer it out to the creature, and even though you're holding it, Cantillus, um, the mouth opens up, and a smaller mouth comes out to grab <laughs> the bit of jerky. And in the process, it also spits a little bit of acid out. And since you failed your dodge chest, Catatonia you are going to suffer some acid damage to your face. Uh, oh. So... <laughs> Not the face. Oh, wow. Okay. Apparently now I'm critting. You're going to take... And, and again, this is reduced by toughness, <laughs> but you are taking 10 damage to the face. Uh, I don't know. Do you have any armor there? Do you... Uh, no, actually, I'm wearing Xenos hide, and uh, it covers everything but my head. Nice. Oh, no. So what's your toughness bonus? Uh, three. Which toughness, means toughness, you would toughness, be taking... Four. So four. four? You would be taking a grand total of six damage to the face. Yeah. Alright. Um, do I do I just go to head and put, like, what, minus four or something? What do I do? Uh, you go to either your wounds, or you sort of see on your token there, it has a green bar. Uh, just oh. minus six. Oh, where's my token? Okay, click, uh, do I click on my token? Okay. Yep, and then um, the green bar, uh, you would click that sort of uh, button next to the green bar. Mm -hmm. And you either put minus six or nine, because that'll get you the same result. I'll just put nine. There, is yeah, that it? That's okay. it. And it'll sync to oh, your character shit. sheet that no matter what map we're on, uh, that will sync. Oh, thank God. So Antillos is going... Oh, sorry. Go ahead, Sorak. Uh, Sorak is going to give a low chuckle. He's going to say, <laughs> Spirited, you said, right, Ira? <laughs> uh, I clench... Uh, <laughs> did it land on what part of my face? All over it. Like, oh. quite literally, just... <laughs> Every part of your face is covered in this. This liquid. Um, uh, I would like to say that I saw this coming. Not, not, not loud. I mean that I saw that it was going to spit on me. But I, I, my instinctual reaction was to close my eyes at least. Mm -hmm. um, well, I think we should. I think we should let him keep it. It'll prove entertaining <laughs> at least. 
I put I, I I try to wipe as much of it off as I can, which of course is damaging my already sullied hands, which I usually wear gloves on. And I say, no, no, don't do. Let me keep it. Don't do anything. Squeezing the creature a little bit tighter, almost a, 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 as like a, as just like a, a in, in defiance of like this request. Yeah. He then Cantillo's then loosens his grip. And is going to, is there like some sort of like container or something we could grab and like shove it into like a cat container? I don't know, anything. <laughs> I tell um, you what, I will say that looking around, um, there does appear to be a few crates in the area. Mm-hmm. Though these crates are enough that, or they're big enough that um, in order to carry one, it would have to be one of the space marines and you would have to use two hands for it. I'm I'm not carrying your pet. Cantolos <laughs> looks down at the creature again, looks it around and says, this is a waste of time, and then clenches his fist on it oh, to crush it. No, oh, and it no. goes everywhere. Like, bits of the creature just splatter all over your power armors, and even a little bit more gets on Catonia. And... <laughs> dropping just... it, dropping the, like, mush to the ground, he says, you are a fool, and if you do aim to get us killed, believe me, I will kill you before you kill me. And then he's going to step forward towards whatever direction we are heading in, just in complete contempt of Catatonia. Re- remind me to actually roll the charm test. Okay, I forgot to click the charm button. I said I was trying to charm it. Oh. oh. Well, you can only do so much with an alien baby. Yeah, I was yeah. going to say, there, there's only so much you can do. Well, on the plus side, there's still the, the fancy looking dude that I pointed out to you and the, the thing, if you want to. Yeah, I was going to say, do you want to mess with fancy dude? Catatonia would be the only one I could I could think that would get anything from it, unless he has like. I, mean, I have cool some burn one. marks. <laughs> um, we are wasting time here. What does this shriveled corpse have for us? Let's let us go. Just because I find it funny, Catatonia, you think like, oh, it's just a corpse. I don't need to bother it. But you kind of look, see mm-hmm. the corpse has gloves. Oh, yeah, hold on. Let me take a willpower test. I want to see if I want to if I want to even approach that thing. I've already, I've already had something uh, burn my face. Nope, I can't resist. <laughs> um, I know everyone's already walking away. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, you know, it's still, it's still in pain. Uh, it's relatively great pain. Mm-hmm. I, I, there's, I'm, I'm, I'm calm because I know, like, I'm gonna say it stopped burning into my skin. Mm-hmm. Uh, I approach the, uh, the container. Uh, what happens now? All right. As you go up to the container, uh, you see that there is a release hatch that all it takes is just a simple pull of a lever to open it. And uh, assuming you do, uh, I do. (laughs) as I said earlier, uh, the door opens and quite literally the mummy inside turns to ash, uh, landing all over you. So now you're covered in ash. (laughs) Have fun with that. But uh, what it leaves behind are a are the following items. Ready uh, in my gear leaves, chart. Uh, it leaves behind a best quality LAS pistol. Okay. Best LAS pistol, yep. And it also leaves behind a set of best mm. quality nobleman gloves. Oh, Jesus Christ. I mean, oh, Chaos Gods. Excellent. Uh, I gingerly pick up from the pile the um, aforementioned gloves Mm -hmm. and I quickly give them a shake, you know, from uh, the pinky, from the pinky, uh, uh, pinky side Mm -hmm. to get as much dust out as I can. And I slip them on my lightly burned hands. Congrats. You now have a fancy set of, you have a set of fancy gloves. (laughs) And I, uh, I look at the gentleman on the floor, what remains of whatever bits of bone there is. If, If it's just a pile, I quickly, um, nod my head in its direction and give it a bow before I return to the group. All right. So, uh, as he returns to the group and you press forward, so you go through the same door that the abomination went through. And when you come into, uh, this new data shrine, um, you do see that the Rakul is not there. In fact, you're looking around, you're seeing no trace that the abomination came through here. Uh, however, uh, in stark contrast to the data terminal you saw earlier, the one where you found the manifest, the difference here is um, 
well, to put it bluntly, uh, it's almost like a Star Trek scene where like half the data terminals are burned out. Uh, there's rocks and other bits of debris that scatter the place. There's pipes and metal hanging down. It looks like this place has been through the ringer. Uh, there are no ser servo skulls. There are no servitors. Well, I take that back. There's corpses of those, but not any functional ones. Do they appear to have been slain recently, or does this appear to be an old, burned-out data hub? Uh, roll me a perception. Or, if you have Medicaid, I would allow a Medicaid. I do not. Can I just take a quick look at the roof? Just, mm -hmm. just you know, peer up at the roof? Anything those were, that was a pretty good roll. All right, so two things here. Uh, let's deal with the roof thing first. Uh, Ira, you look up. And what you see is just an unending void as you look up. Just darkness. Um, as for what Cantillus, you get with that perception. These corpses have been there for quite a long period of time. We're talking centuries at this point. So so it wasn't like the uh, creature that we saw came in here and like destroyed everything. This is an old battle site. Or old correct. Wounds. Okay. Uh, could I... Could I use my embedded aspects again to peer up into that darkness and see if I can't get any readings up there? Sure. Uh, remind me of the range on the aspects, though. Yeah, let me scroll down to my cybernetics here. Uh, let's see. Let's pull aspects. Uh, so I have a range of 50 meters is the standard range, uh, but it is a good variant. Okay. Uh, oh, no, that just increases the bonus. Okay, right, right. right. So I think what happens is even when you look up with your aspects, you see the walls going up and up and up, but again, just pure darkness above you. Awesome. Okay. Uh, yeah, after, after appearing up at that for a while, I'm going to get a little unnerved and uh, just look back down. Ira, what do you see above us? Uh, absolutely nothing. <laughs> I, I disturbing just, there's not even a roof it just goes up not I would even, suggest continue Sirak. not even a roof uh, Sirak will uh, look up using the auto sensors of his helmet <clears throat> yep you see the same thing just goes up and up and up and up until you just can't see any further some hmm. mysteries will remain mysteries what direction are we heading Ira? Uh, we continue out the door on the far side of the chamber, and then we will take the first right, and that will, and continue down. Take right. point. All right, I will I'll take point with my combi bolter. All right. So let's be very like clear here. What is the marching order? <clears throat> Antilos is always going to be behind Catania, Catania, because right. he doesn't trust you. Um, I I will try to plead with um. Uh, Cantillus, to please, um, Cantillus, uh, I know you told me to uh, hang in the front, but I'm a little getting used to my burned features right now. Can I please stay behind someone? Can I charm him now? Can I try that? <laughs> you don't worry. have to charm me. I'm a PC. I'm going to just acknowledge and say, I shouldn't fear you. In fact, I <laughs> like the way you look now. It's been a drastic <laughs> improvement to your previous features. You may take up the the Vad God, and he's going to step forward and uh, step next to Sirak and right behind Ira. Uh, I will. I will say just because of my loadout, uh, if Sirak or Cantilius want to be ahead of me, just because they're a little more melee focused, I would not. Sirak, yeah, Sirak says, "I will take point. I it's been too long since I've put this Crozius to good use." Then, uh... <clears throat> We do a little swap, and uh, I'll be the navigator from uh, the middle. And Moira will go take up the rear, and as she passes Catatonia, uh, she'll lean over and whisper, Don't worry, I'll take up the rear. <laughs> uh, oh. I, don't, I don't make a pass at her, at her hair. I'm, I'm good right now. Burn face, my confidence, low right now. <clears throat> Aww. Understandable. Yikes. <laughs> she's also right. wearing a helmet. She's in full power armor at the moment. Yeah, oh, she excuse is, me. Okay. She's in full power armor. <clears throat> All right. So, Cantilius, are you wanting to be second or third? Or... Looks like second by my count. Yeah. Well, he, well I, I was originally here. He kind of came up next to me. I don't know if he wants to. 
Well, the uh, the major point is that uh, we have Sorak up front, which is the is the big kicker. Yeah. And the other point is that I I'm actually secretly in love with uh, Ira. There you go. <laughs> there you go. Right, I'm forming a bond. But yeah, uh, Sorak, when the door opens, uh, you of course see into the uh, twisting corridors beyond. But what you see is something you weren't really looking forward to. The abomination was waiting on the other side of that door. <laughs> so, uh, Sirach, uh, you do, of course, have the ability to parry this if it hits. But it's going to come at you with its rat axe. And uh, it rolled, wow, it rolled literally a one. Holy crap. Holy shit. Which, uh, I don't think so. I think that's degrees of success. Ah, okay, it's not actually showing us the roll. Okay, yeah. which is a problem. Uh, let me see if there's a way I can... No, we don't know what that is. All right, well, I'm just going to roll something below a 57, and that's what we'll use for this instance. Oh, no, it is. It is. Because uh, if you if you mess over ranged and dot... What is my dog? Oh, yeah. No, it is a 1. Yeah. It is indeed oh. a 1. Yeah. Well, damn. He, he just got a real good hit on you. Huh. Uh which, uh, I mean, you could attempt to parry, but he has six degrees of success, so you would have to get more than six to parry him. Uh, no, you only need as many bad degrees as our hits. Ah. Yeah. Which is odd, but yeah, for, for whatever reason, how good you hit doesn't doesn't really affect the parry. So just probably makes it so you can't just get one shot, ideally. I mean, <laughs> probably, yeah. yeah. Uh, so All right, that's, that's two. All right, so I believe what happens is the rat axe comes in, and at the last moment you <clears throat> bring forth your weapon and turn it away. Um, but you definitely don't want to get hit by that thing if you can help it. Yeah. <clears throat> so I guess back, I brother, back. <laughs> And yeah, we're going to treat this like pseudo combat because there's only one enemy, so there's not really a point to doing turn order. So, uh we're just going to we're going to play this loosey goosey. Uh, well, I did have my my launcher at the ready for this sort of thing. Uh okay. or for this thing specifically. So nobody and then minds. Two of us dive out of the way first. <laughs> Is that cool? <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, I mean, if yeah, you well, it's a crack missile, so it's not going to blast or anything. Oh, okay. Cool. <clears throat> I would like to, if he can, like, can Telos would like to, like, grab the back of Sorak's power armor and, like, pull him back from the creature in, like, a swift motion. And I imagine that he brings his bolt gun up and maybe fires once, like, at it, like, instinctually. But that's about it. That's all I wanted to do, just so that you would get a clear shot, Ira. Uh, does Sorak go with it, or...? Are you cool with that? Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. cool. the same <clears throat> yeah. I, I feel like at this point, uh, we would have shared box codes so that we yeah. could all speak besides catatonia yeah mm -hmm. so gentilo says back and then he like drags you aside and fires probably ineffectually i mean i'll roll to attack if you're okay with it elh but i don't think a bolt pistol can deal damage <laughs> yeah, i think i think this thing's too tanky uh, you know what yeah. you know what we're just gonna give it a shot am i point, a am I point blank yeah you are point blank S standard yeah uh, unless you want to burst fire it, I think it's capable of it. Okay. Uh, I can fire twice, uh, so I'm just gonna fire once, just instinctually. All right, uh, that passes. It's a hit, and then damage. Uh, here we go. Here we go. Let's see how much damage I don't do. Nothing. <laughs> nothing. Ooh. Whole lot of nothing. Uh, and then, uh, <laughs> as they get out of the way, uh, there's a, a release of noxious fumes as uh, the missile launcher lets out a crack missile at this thing. 41 is enough. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, that does crit. Yeah, I was going to say, that is a 10 I'm seeing. So <laughs> let's see. Pen 8. Let me do math here. So pen 8 will get rid of uh, almost all of its armor. It'll have one remaining. And it has a toughness bonus of that. So I believe you deal 19 damage to it by my count. Ooh. And then I'll roll my critical on that. Uh, it's a four. four. So what happens is you fire this crack missile. Um, it embeds itself in the uh, torso of, well, what did you roll? You rolled a 41, 14. No, it embeds itself in the arm, the left arm of this creature. 
And moments oh, right. later, it explodes, uh, sending a shower of gore over everyone in the immediate area. But it Can also... I dodge? Well, you know, it's, 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 it's just flavor gore, but if you want to dodge it, I'm not going to say no. The baby burned me. <laughs> I mean, this is true. I also, I don't know if necessarily you're in the immediate area standing behind Oh, Yura. okay, thank you. I think it's, yeah, I I think it's just Cantillos and Serac at this point. Okay. Maybe, maybe Yura. But it's yeah. hard to tell because he's already gross. Okay. <laughs> I don't really notice it. All right, let's see. Explosive critical effect of a four to the arm. The blast rips the sinew of the arm straight from the bone. They are stunned for one round and the limb is useless. Very nice. So yeah, the arms uh, along its left side go completely limp, and the creature fun. stands there stunned for a moment. And I think uh, this is when Sorak grabs his crozier in two hands and goes on the counteroffensive. All right, well, go uh, ahead and roll. I, I believe you can 30? hit him. I think it's uh, plus 30, yeah. Yeah, it's plus 30. Uh, Let's get crazy. It. I'm just going to say it would be very embarrassing if you were to fail this. Oh, wait. <laughs> I'm going to do an all-out attack, right? That's. Uh, you won't have a reaction, but you can. Yeah. yeah. Get wild. That's like another plus 30, isn't it, or something? Uh, yeah, I think so. Something <clears throat> like it. And that's a full action, right? Yes, yes, it is a full. Okay. So no aim. All-out. Modifier 30. Yeah, 55. <laughs> Go ahead and roll me some damage. And it's concussive zero because I'm using two hands. Okay. All right, pen seven. Yes, so that survive. is enough. Uh, that after uh, the fact. Wait, nope. Hold on. Oh. Uh, uh, how many? I got six degrees of success. Mm -hmm. So Five it's six, twenty. Yeah. Uh, Twenty-one damage. All right. How would you like to kill this <clears throat> abomination? So, uh, after the crack missile launches itself and blows out a chunk of its left side uh, and stands there stunned with shock, uh, Sorok, um, uh rushes forward with his crozius in two hands, batters away the rad axe on its other side, and just buries the head right in this thing's forehead. And, of course and then with a sickening crunch, just... <sighs> And pulls it back out. And yeah, the creature doesn't really make a sound as you crunch in its cranium, but it does, almost like a puppet with its strings cut, goes immediately limp and just goes to the deck plate hard. Mm. <clears throat> and Tillos is going to look at Serac and at Ira and just nod his head. Well fought, brothers. Grover will respond by putting in one of his uh one of his last two crack missiles into his uh his launcher uh, and, and encounter another one of those he looks back at the two humans uh Cantillos, and says now you see how true warriors fight i step out from behind moira and i say <laughs> yes quite impressive you can hear moira scoffing at you <laughs> <laughs> all right so come uh, we must not lose any time All right, so uh, you guys proceed out into the hallway, and as per the instructions that the terminal gave you, you take an immediate right. And as you do, you see that the passageway snakes around to the west and out of view. And the more you follow it, uh, you're actually going to be off the map in this instance. Uh, eventually, there's a light at the end of the passageway. And as you approach the light in a cautious manner, uh, you look out and see that you are looking out on a massive um, interior space, almost like a hangar bay uh, that you might find in like an Arc uh, Mechanicus. So a very large hangar bay that could literally fit a cruiser or a Grand Cruiser inside of it. It's that big. Oh, my God. Um, but speaking of ships, you do see one. In fact, this hangar receptacle is containing what appears to be uh, a ship that is vaguely like a a sword class frigate, but at last you checked, a sword class frigate doesn't have rotating plasma cannons, nor does it have uh, a design like that. In fact, the more you look at this thing, the more you come to realize this is a dark age of technology ship. 
Ooh. This is from before the Horus Heresy. Uh, question. So, mm -hmm. I don't know if anyone else is Ancient Warrior, but specifically uh, with my my sort of backstory, would I recognize this vessel at all from previous experience? What I would say is that this is from before even your experiences. Oh. oh shit. And Telos is going to look back at Catonia. Show your worth. Can you fly it? Sir, I can fly anything given time. <laughs> and Moira actually speaks up and says, well, um, I don't want to be the bearer of bad news, but you might want to look a little bit closer. And as everybody obligatory stares and squints, uh, what you realize is that between you and the ship is just a swarm of rat ghoul. They're Ugh. moving about on like little moving platforms, anti-graph platforms that are taking it through the space. And you see that they are swarming all over this ship. But strangely enough, it doesn't seem that they found an entry point. Like they're they're like ants on a creature trying to get inside the creature, but they haven't found a way in yet. Hmm. <clears throat> does this open up to the void? Uh, it does not. This appears to be a entirely enclosed space. In fact, those of you that aren't in an enclosed environment like Catatonia, you're breathing just fine. Thank God. So there isn't, uh, it doesn't look like there are shutters that can open up into the void? No, it just quite literally looks like to be an amphitheater like you'd find in a cave, just with no real exits for what's ever inside. Okay. Well, how but did this ship even get yes. here? Can, can we, like, look at uh, the map or something? Hopefully identify a way out? What I would say is that is the more you look around, uh, you realize that the only way you're going to get that ship out of here is, well, one, you have to get past the rat ghoul. Right. Uh, two, you have to figure out how the hell Dark Age technology works. And then three, I mean, those rotating plasma cannons probably could burn through the, uh, the Space Hulk's armor pretty very easily. Gotcha. All right. Um, gentlemen, I say we find a way to get inside. It is really, truly a wonder. We have never heard of you. <laughs> still still working on it. Always working on it. All right. And I tell you what, uh, why don't we call that session zero for now? That way, uh, when we do session one, uh, I will have a fancy little map for us to have. Right. But yeah. So yeah, uh, that's going to be end of session one. Uh, YouTube, thanks so much for watching. Um, we will hopefully be on stream for real, uh, next Sunday. So look forward to that. That'll be at 2 PM, but, uh, see you stream. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.